going silently and then we'll come back and we'll handle each section of the verses. Okay, the word that came to Jeremiah for all the Jews living in the land of Egypt, those who are living in Midol, Tapanthes, Memphis, and the land of Pethros, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You yourselves have seen all of the calamity that I have brought on Jerusalem and all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are in ruins, and no one lives in them. Because of their wickedness which they committed, so as to provoke me to anger, by continuing to burn sacrifices, and to serve other gods whom they had not known, neither they, you, nor your fathers. Yet I sent you all, my servants, the prophets, again and again, saying, Oh, he says, Oh, do not do this abominable thing which I hate. Now, you know what? I'm going to pause right there because what I want to do is I want to get right into this because we're going to handle each one of these verses. <clears throat> and I want to give you a little bit of the background of why I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this to you today. We live in a time when the standard of living in this country is the highest in the world, though it's slipping very quickly. Our standard of living is, is, will be at rock bottom within three or four years. Within three or four years, our economy will well nigh be shot. It will be something that will not exist anymore. But yet and still, we have the plasma screens, beautiful cars, beautiful homes. We consume more and more. We buy more stuff, and we're still buying it. And our country has fallen deeper and deeper into decay. We have nothing to offer our God but flimsy excuses why we do what we do. And we do that, and I'm speaking about not only us, the church, but I'm speaking about those that are not the church. We do it in the face of history where God has always judged nations for them not acquiescing to his standard. Now, as a man of God, as a preacher of God, I've got to, the reason that I looked at this is because I said, you know what, I fall into that same trap. I like driving my fancy little car. Before I go back to work at the college, I plan on taking three or four days. I want to drive up the coast to Santa Barbara, or, and, you know, go somewhere and just relax, eat the better foods, and, 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 and live the high life and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking about this and I'm saying, how does God view me? How am I supposed to live? How are you supposed to live? When you look at Daniel chapter 5, verse 27, it speaks of Bel to Shadrach's judgment. We too have been weighed in the scales of God's divine justice, and we are found wanting. All right, you're going there. Let's go to Daniel chapter 5, verse 27. I don't know whether you ever looked at that particular verse before, but it says um, that you have been weighed on the scales and found deficient. This is when the judgment came through Belteshazzar on um, the Babylonians. And that's when Daniel had to come and transliterate that judgment that was coming to Babylon. Well, I believe that America has been weighed in the scales. We've been weighed in the scales for years, for years and years. You can't find practically anywhere a decent Bible church. You can't find it. I mean, some of you coming from all parts of the city. We have people visiting from other cities here this morning. And my brother told me that in his city, 300 churches, right, Hans? 300 churches this man has visited and can't find a Bible church in the general San Jose area unless you really search deeply like you found us. That's how bad it's getting. Now spread that out to the whole country. And every time I get a phone call, I got a phone call I let some of the people listen to today. A brother that goes to Grace Community Church. 
saying, there are problems in grace. You said it. No one wants to say it. I want to meet with you and talk about these problems. Talking about the problems means nothing. Christianity, as taught in the Bible, is not taught in this country the way that it was before. It is not taught. So, what is our objective? What we're going to do this morning is we're going to look back in time in order to view a particular nation. That's what we're going to do. As well as the people that were judged by God. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare ourselves, our nation. Our children are going back to school after the holidays. My God! I spent the night with my daughter and her husband and her family and I sat down and I told them, you have the work of life on your hand to protect these children from the mess that's out there. Because I'm telling you, when the judgment, when God's judgment falls on America, it's going to fall on all of us. And the only thing that is going to keep us in any kind of way, in accommodation, come on ladies, we have seats, we, first row. You guys get the chance to sit right up here next to the pastor. That's right. We got first row seats for you guys. There you go, big guy. All righty. Yeah, we got room. Now, since, you know what, in the end, some fellowship, don't let anybody tell you that you can't pack a church out. Look at this. Cameraman, I want you to scan and show the folk around here. Just scan the camera. Just turn it. There you go. Turn and show the folks sitting in the fellowship. For those of you at home, I told you to start your own fellowship. Open up that room and open up that Bible and teach the Bible to God's people. And it's not about paying for this big building and getting all that stuff and stomping Satan. Open up that book. You will have people saying here in this text with where you are in your life today. That's what I want you to do. We want to look at our lives and then weigh our lives in spite of what we've seen in this ancient text. Because the same God, the very same God that spoke thousands of years ago in this text is speaking today to our hearts. Let's go to part one on the outline, the tragic history of a rebellious people. We're going to look at Israel, and we're going to look at the tragic history of a rebellious people. For those of you that just came in, there's a scripture on the whiteboard and where we are, and so that you can find out exactly where we are. Now, let's go through verses one through three. I'll break it down like that, and so we won't have to read them all. And we're going to try to get through this in one setting. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah for all the Jews in the land of Egypt, those who are living in Madal and in Memphis and in Pepharo, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You yourselves have seen all of the calamity that I brought on Jerusalem and all the cities of Judah, and behold, this day they are in ruins, and no one lives in them, because of their wickedness, which they committed to as to provoke anger by continuing 